Good. Next. Ich habe meinen Lockenschuss aus der Hüfte. Now for your submachine guns. If you're trapped in close quarters with multiple opponents, the SMGs can help clear the room quickly. Not subtle or quiet, but. Range encounters, the assault rifle's the key. It's accurate, powerful. Just be sure to line up your shots carefully. Boah, die Rückstoß. Watch for attackers from above. They may be out of reach, but not rifle range. Boah, da komme ich ja noch richtig nubig vor. So, drauf durch die Tür. Good, Mike. I'm logging the results now. Alright. Is somebody out on the course? Darcy. <lacht> He's trying to beat your time. Well, how's he doing? Not well. He's distracted. Why? <laughs> as soon as he knew you were talking to me, Mike, he was in here in a second. In case he saw you as a challenge for my affections. It's like a cage match with you boys. So how'd I do on the course? Calling it out now. Well, that's good enough. It'll do. Satisfactory enough for Westridge, I think. You can give it another run if you want. Or okay. should be free. That's good, Sean. I'll pass. Very well. I'll log your score. I'll have the results sent to your handler. And Westridge can give the rest of your evaluation, provided you've completed the other tests. Oh, jetzt ist das auch fertig. Dann wollen wir ein bisschen über Westridge reden. Westridge reden. Ja, der Ladebalken läuft und läuft. Tür bitte auf. Tür bitte auf. Tür bitte auf. Der lädt schon wieder. Uh. Das Original. You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. You all done? Ja. You tell me. Now you're learning. I have to admit I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. You gave our staff a run for its money. <laughs> I gave it my best and so did they. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. Got your evaluation back on the tech portion of your training. Looks like Darcy went the usual route with new candidates. Even so, I suggest a refresher course either here or on the field. These numbers aren't good. Nina's report says you might need more practice on the gun range, but you're probably still shaking off the drugs we gave you. I'm still yeah. brushing up on my skills. Nina's a good teacher. I just need to be a better student. She is a good teacher. She has a good eye for potential. I'll let her know your thoughts. And here's a surprise. A positive evaluation from Parker. Lord. On the number side as usual. But he actually took the time to write a sentence. He did. Uh... What was the sentence? You may have been right about this one, Westridge. For Parker, that's high praise. Hmm. Assuming you don't let us down, Mike. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteered. Usually, we have to ask. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. Hmm. My opinion isn't important. Yours is. Not out in the field, and not when you're dealing directly with others. Then your opinion is all that counts. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, 
There's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good, because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people, your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I understand. Is there something wrong with how I deal with people? No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you, and your reputation with them. And if I want to impress them? You don't always want to or need to. Having a good or bad rep with someone can actually gain you different benefits. Uh -huh. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. Other times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places. And your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want? Okay. And if I compromise an asset in the field by choosing the wrong path? No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time's something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during a conversation. Although that can be a plus. Mm -hmm. If I need a breather to assess the situation, right? The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, Making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. And if they're a target, why talk to them at all? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it if you have to, if the conversation isn't going your way. Assuming there's okay. even a way you want the conversation to go. So how do I know how someone wants to be treated? At least, enough to cooperate. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Mostly tech user manuals. Then I rewrite them. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Aww. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more <laughs> you will be. So when the guns come out, the dossier can come into play. Have you read mine? Several times. You have dossiers on everyone here? Yep, if you can dig them up. You might learn a few things. Sometimes reading a dossier will give you more options when dealing with others. A few facts to bring up, to shake secrets loose. What about you? You should already know what makes me happy, Mike. And what pisses me off. <laughs> How do I know when I have the go-ahead to start accessing files? After meeting a target or hearing their name referenced by someone else, you should have a target ID. Then hop onto the database and start doing your homework. You can usually unlock their basic information at that point. Let's start with a simple one. Al Samad. That should be familiar to you. The terrorist group. Yes, you can research groups as well as people. It doesn't carry the same benefits, 